Hey. If you're uh, keeping count at the top 25 and one. Oh, boy. And, and I don't know why you would be, but if you are, it's been updated seven times now over the past Stop. eight days. The Stop. transfer board, I thought. I thought once the season was over, I'd have to I get to stop updating the top twenty five and one every day. Turns out that's that's not true at all. And Norlander, I want to talk to you first about the happenings at Duke because the Blue Devils, we now know, or at least we're now operating with the uh, understanding of, uh, they're going to lose Cal Filipowski, Ryan Young, Jared McCain, Mark Mitchell, and we just learned earlier this week. Jeremy Roach he says he's entering the draft and the transfer portal I don't know that he'll be picked in the draft so he'd be playing college basketball probably perhaps somewhere else next season that means Duke is now set to lose top four scores from this past season five of the top seven uh Tyrese Proctor Caleb Foster I guess Sean Stewart are the only rotation players expected back regardless Duke remains and I don't know if you've seen this the favorite in the betting markets to win the 2025 NCAA tournament. That's at least according to FanDuel, largely because of uh, the strength of a top-ranked recruiting class headlined by Phenom Cooper Flag. So here's my question for you. Yeah. Do you remain a big believer in what will be John Shire's third team, or are you starting to get concerned that <laughs> they're going to have to replace a whole bunch of important pieces and be heavily reliant on a bunch of freshmen? No, 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 no. I'll tell you what we're not going to do right now. What we're going to do. Great to be back. It's great to be back on the show. This is an early morning Thursday, mid-April pod, by the way, for you folks out there. What we are not going to do is play the how concerned are we about Duke in the middle of April game. That I is, am, that I'm is what we are not doing. No. I, don't, I don't mean to cut. Look, maybe I should have taken this to a different <laughs> podcast. <laughs> My concern level is subterranean right but now. But I need to know your concern level for the Blue Devils right now. I'm not even joking. I'm being a little serious. Here's here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. Okay, take level of concern out of it, all right? Yeah. I, wa I walked right into that. that that's, yeah. that's on me. That's on me, all right? Yeah. Um. Here's, uh, in all seriousness, Duke is the favorite to win the national title right now, right? And Duke ain't done. Obviously, John Shire is going to fill out this roster. And um, I did at one point have Duke as high as number two in the top 25 and one. And by at one point, I mean at one point over the past week. <laughs> a lot's going <laughs> on. It's been a lot. It's been on. a week. A lot's going on. Um, I am aware, though. I guess let me just ask you this question. Okay. If we are assuming Tyrese Proctor and Caleb Foster are the only two relevant players back, at least, um, you know, they're losing their top four scores. They're losing five of their top seven. The two of the top seven that are actually on their way back, it appears, are Tyrese Proctor and Caleb Foster. When you just start comparing that to what happened around the sport this season, teams built like this didn't win. Not, not at an elite level. Like, how many good teams heavily – it, it seems pretty clear at this point, no matter what happens, Duke is going to be heavily reliant on multiple freshmen next season. How many good teams relied on multiple freshmen this past season? Uh, not many. The only team right. that applies broadly to what you just said was UConn, which lost five of its top eight, but obviously won a national championship and brought back key pieces and didn't rely on freshmen. In fact, it only had one freshman of impact, Stefan Castle. Uh, it has more freshmen set to come back that will play increased roles there. So, yeah, there is something to okay. right there real quick because it is true. Lost five of the top eight. What is also true with UConn and it just however you cut it, they did bring back three of their top five. Yeah. And they were only heavily reliant, really, on one freshman. I, I, the answer, I think, how many good teams were heavily reliant on multiple freshmen last season? I think the answer is Baylor. Ba Baylor, um, two of the top five scores were freshmen. At Kentucky, three I, of the yeah. top. I would say heavily reliant. I say two of your five isn't even heavily reliant. I would just okay. say, yeah, semi reliant. Uh, uh, okay. So ba Baylor finished 15th at Ken Palm. Two of their top five scores were freshmen. Kentucky finished 25th at Ken Palm. Three of their top five were freshmen. Outside of that, you really didn't see top 25 Ken Palm teams re relying heavily on multiple freshmen at the same time. If I have a concern with Duke, and not a real concern, not whether Duke's going to be good, but whether Duke should be number one in the top 25 and one or where I have them right now, number seven in the top 25 and one. I just think based on roster construction right now, they're closer to seven than one, but Duke fans don't seem to agree with me. Well, of course they don't. Uh, and a lot of this will depend on whether Cooper flag is a generational college talent. Cause he's going to be marketed as that. And 
I guess understandably so. He's been an amazing player to watch, and uh, his two-way ability is insane. But is he going to be able to step in and 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 prove to be transcendent? Because they might need him to be to truly put them on the plane of being at least at this stage. Uh, number one, I, I didn't know that about the Vegas thing. Um, although it's so early, I, I I frankly put zero stock into it. I mean zero. We're gonna get into some portal stuff here, but it, this is a good thing for college troops. It's you know there's you know decisions being made daily here uh and i actually think that it helps bring you know more discussion and attention to the sport but it does you know it does make <laughs> your job more hectic than ever uh the fact that you have had seven editions in fact i gotta go back and find edition number one because i like to compare your title night version one with whatever you land on on the first day of the season i always like to see what's changed a lot of that's obviously because all the decisions down the portal and and roster stuff with all that but um i mean it's just way we're just way too early into the cycle i mean really too early to even get a true grasp on um what the top teams will look like i mean for example i did bring up your top 25 and one here like you've got houston number one right now when the dust truly settles a month from now, six weeks from now, we know where everyone is. Like, hard to figure how Houston won't be at worst third or fourth. Like, it's going to probably stay there. But there's, you know, there are a number of teams that could that could shift one way or the other. And as for Duke, it's going to have to um, get a player or two in the portal. We'll see who it winds up being because it will not be just freshmen, obviously. Although Shire was, where was I? I was with Duke. Uh, it must have been Brooklyn um, during the tournament. And he did get asked about this. And it was because Kentucky had lost to Oakland the night before. And uh, to paraphrase him, because I definitely don't have the quote up in front of me, he said, you know, we are Duke. And, you know, there are still really, really good players coming out of high school. Am I not going to take Jared McCain, who was coming off in a, at the second best showing in a tournament game points wise by a freshman ever? the best being Zion Williamson. Am I not, not going to take him? Of course not, but there's got to be a balance that, that you got to strike. I think, uh, I think Shire and his staff are aware of that. Uh, the question will be who Duke brings in the Roach stuff. Like Roach leaving is not a surprise that was in the air for a little bit. And it just got made formal uh, in the past, what, 24, 36 hours here. But I do think he's a key player and he's a player who actually carries an intriguing or just at least an interesting, uh, uh, legacy at that program because he was really the guy that bridged the Shashevsky to Shire era. You know, his, half of his career was it was spent playing for Coach K, and half of it was spent playing for for John Shire as the head coach. And he's the only player where that's truly uh, truly the case as a starter for both those guys for multiple years. And so now he goes, and now you enter year three under Shire. You enter a big phase. It'll be after two quality seasons, and they were quality for sure. Uh, Shire's done a good job to this point. Uh, now, year three, as was expected, basically, since Cooper Flag committed to Duke. Uh, this is the one that will enter with well, even more attention, even more pressure, even more polarization, uh, just by nature of Cooper Flag being Cooper Flag. Uh, awesome young man, and he's going to be a ton of fun to watch. Uh, he'll just be an amazing player playing for Duke, and so it will up <laughs> it will up Duke's hateability quotient, and I'm fine with that because for the people that want to do that, it brings more interest and intrigue to the sport. But right now, like... Not yet. I can't say Duke is a top five roster. It could very well get there, but uh, they got to fill way too many pieces in, man. And and Caleb Foster's got to return and and be a lot better coming off injury. And Proctor was a bit up and down, obviously. So uh, will he have the year next year that he was expected to have this past year? That would go a long way to reinforcing the idea that Duke can be a top three to five team. And that's the other thing here. Like, okay, they're only bringing back um, two of the top six. One of them's Tyrese Proctor, who is like great as an idea, but he hasn't been a great college basketball player yet. He's he's the classic example of a guy who's been a, a good prospect, not a good player. And and perhaps that's overstating it. He's been a good player, but he's but, been good. He's but, been good. But, yeah, but certainly not, but certainly not what he was supposed to be. I, I think some people had him on preseason All America list heading into the season, and he certainly wasn't that. I like Caleb Foster. I, th- I mean, I, I think he could have a breakthrough season. He had a, a couple of really big games. He was a little bit up and down till the injury, but, like, I believe in that. I believe in second-year Caleb Foster. I guess here's my question for you, and this is where my point of concern is. Forget how it turned out. What would you rather have if I could just give it to you? Antonio Reeves, Trey Mitchell, and Kentucky's recruiting class last season, or Tyrese Proctor, Caleb Foster, 
in Duke's recruiting class this season? Answer that question and see where we see where the conversation. I'm going. Goes. I'm going Duke because the the main player in this could really be the difference. Um, At Kentucky, you might have two top five picks in that class. Yeah, there's a lot of factors. I mean, and Reeves, and I think Antonio Reeves is better than any of the, any of the Duke returning players. So you like Kentucky's roster from this past season, I'm right? Just saying, right now, I'm just saying it's comparable, and Kentucky just finished 25th at Ken Palm. So when you start yeah. saying Duke should be in the top three, didn't have or a guy even like Flag on the roster. That's my only thing. Like Flag could truly be, like, could be the best player in the sport next season. Yeah. And and along a, a big part of that is his insane defensive ability, and uh, Kentucky didn't have a dude like that. So that's what makes it intriguing. I agree with that. Um, I just think it's it's a it's an interesting conversation. Um, th this this is the biggest program in the sport. Um, it's the favorite to win the 2025 NCAA tournament. But the roster construction, as currently presented, um, doesn't go hand in hand with college basketball success in recent years with the transfer portal and name, image, and likeness. That's that's the only thing um, that that I, I, I find it. In, you know, sort of interesting to 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 dive into. For instance, if, if Duke does win a national championship, it will we agree largely be on the backs of freshmen, and so that would be the 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 third team in modern history that could win a national championship largely with freshmen. 2012 Kentucky is another example. 2015 Duke another example. Um, I guess I went and looked at those. 2012 Kentucky, yes, everybody remembers Anthony Davis, but from 2011 Kentucky. Um, they brought back three of the top four scorers from that team and then added Anthony Davis, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, Marcus Teague, all of that on top of it. 2015 Duke, they've been brought back from 2011 Duke, three of the top five scorers. And then they added Jaleel Okafor and Tyus Jones and Justice Winslow on top of that. Kentucky doesn't have that. I mean, Duke this season doesn't have that much to, 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 to provide a base for the incredible freshman class and that would be my concern not a concern that duke's not going to be good but is duke really going to be preseason number one based on the current roster construction that's not usually the way it happens these days yeah uh it will be uh it will be the latest you know big storyline as it as it pertains to that um also keep in mind and i know you know this but you know winning the tournament uh versus getting to be a one seed and doing all uh, two, two different things. And we'll sure. see how they, how consistent they can be. But um, there is, there is more roster intrigue perhaps than expected at, uh, at Duke. And you know, that, that obviously brings a lot of attention and curiosity to the sport there as they try and figure out who they fill. And then, where Roach winds up going, we'll see. He's being courted by a lot of uh, bigger name programs, uh, quality, quality veteran, like lead guard. So he is, he's, I don't know if he's the best place, not the best player in the portal, but I, I'd say he's the value he carries and the experience to me puts him among the 15 or 20 most important names in the portal. And we'll see how quickly he makes his decision.